We need to stand up and speak up against corruption. Good morning again. We are here at the Borough Square bringing education to the masses. We are asking the big question, where the money gone? Where the money gone? Because we have been hearing of this discrepancy in the accounts of the country. The state resources is being sold. Our only form of revenue generating right now is the sale of passports. So we are demanding accountability. We need to know what is being done with the monies that is being generated from the sale of our passports. Because we have that hotel going up in Portsmouth, it's being done by range development. The land was given from the state. The passport was given by the state as well to be sold to build that hotel. Today, we are hearing that foreigners, our UN ambassador, is taking the range development court for his share of the monies generated from the sale of our passport for that same hotel. He's demanding that 5%, which, ac which accumulates to 7 million US dollars, as his share from the sale of the passport. Because while the other parties have gotten their 30 million dollars as their percentage, he's demanding his 5%. Because God knows what went wrong. You know when man's money, they, they get corrupt and they seems, it seems like they do not want to give him his money, so he's taking them to court. Now while all that is happening in the outside world, we in Portsmouth, we continue to be silent like nothing is going on. That is why we stand here today, to bring that message to the people and educate them. Because the affairs of the state is the affairs that will affect each and every one of us. We are demanding accountability. We are demanding transparency. We are standing up today against corruption and against victimization. Because the last time we were here, we stood up and we spoke on behalf of the NEP workers. Because while they are working, they are complaining that there are, are payments that have been outstanding. And would you believe the very next day, the, ver the same NEP workers that we've been standing up and speaking for, they victimized some of them. And that is wrong. We ought not to let that happen. We have to stand up as a people and let our voices be heard. Stand up and show our strength. Because while they continue to take over every radio station to avoid the masses, especially from the north, from being educated, they will do that to keep us submitted to them. They cannot muzzle us. We must speak. We must open our mouth and speak to the issues that are affecting us. We have persons traveling on buses and voicing their opinion. And would you believe before they get off that bus, they get in the phone calls from ministers and persons in high office trying to accuse them and tell them that they are giving them X, Y, and Z, how they can be saying those things. That is wrong. Never in the history of politics in Dominica have we been submitted to those kinds of things. And that is why we must come out and speak as a people. We must come out and speak because when you look at the conditions in which we are living, we have our civil servants that are struggling. We have teachers that have been working for over 25 years and they have not been appointed. We have nurses working right there at the health center in Portsmouth. Remember I said a health center because we do not have a hospital. A hospital, if we have, if we have a little accident, a minor accident here, yeah, you cannot go up to that health center and get a proper diagnosis. So we cannot call it a hospital, right? We have nurses that are choking their hand in their pocket to use from the little that they have to buy paracetamol and little, little, even toilet paper they are buying to put up at the, at the health center. And yet still we hear of billions of dollars that are missing. We have our fire officers. Right now they are living in a, a facility a facility that has been rented. Their structure itself has been abandoned. We have the town council building that has been abandoned from Maria, if you look just at just in there, it is still on the tarpaulin. We have the custom officers that are living in a building that is still uncovered. These are the issues that are affecting us and yet still you hear of billions of dollars that are, be, that are out there. Right? For a selective few to use and enrich themselves while the masses are being held in poverty. My people, we in Postmark, we have a development plan. All the big businessmen in Postmark, they are aware of it. Yet still, they will sit there and say nothing because they are benefiting. Right here in Borough Square. This is not a bus stop. 
This was designed for the people to come and recreate. We need a bus terminal, and this is what I'm committing myself to do. When we get into office, one of the very first things on the agenda is to remove that bus stop in Borough Square. We will acquire land just adjacent of the, the Domlek building now and build a proper bus terminal so that the Borough Square can be upgraded, it can be uplifted, not to speak about what it is today, with proper sitting area, that the elderly that we claim to love so much, they can come here. We have the different facilities that are caring for the elderly. They can come here on a Sunday afternoon or any, any time of day and relax. They can socialize with their, with, their, with their colleagues, their peers. People can come there and spend some time with them. Let them feel welcome in society, not locked up in, a, in an institution. That is what we call care of the elderly, right? Our roads in Portsmouth, we have to bring it up to one lane and ease up the congestion. These are plans that we have to develop Portsmouth. We have that boardwalk from that very same borough square going all the way down to the market and it can go up to the Indian River. These are long-term development that we have for the Portsmouth area. When we look at the Indian River facility, it has been, it was upgraded by the United Workers Party back then. Since the United Workers Party left office, it has been left to deteriorate like that. These are areas that we will look into and develop that area so that the guys working at the Indian River they can generate proper income. We, can up, we need to upgrade that Indian River facility so we can have more tourists coming in there. Right? We need marketing for that facility. We have cabbage there, it's just there like a white elephant to present. We have a cruise ship booth that is there, empty. Every day of the week it is empty. We need to venture in these areas and upgrade the tourism sector of Portsmouth for Dominica to move forward in tourism or in any area, in any sector of the economy. Portsmouth must develop. In agriculture, we have the one mile facility there, it is abandoned, right? We have to look into that one mile facility and develop it so that farmers can go back to their farm and get the proper assistance that they need, be it in input, in livestock, in, in siblings, in education as well. We need to upgrade that one mile facility and put some proper processing plan there. So once we can once we bring in our, our our produce from the farms, they can go right there into that facility, be processed, packaged and transported to that long house facility there, which will be upgraded as well. It will be upgraded under the United Workers Party under my patronage. I commit myself to this development so that the long house facility can house containers. We can have that bustle area in the long house, in the long house facility where our goods, our produce will be transported in the region. Right? We have to look into ships, the ships that we've been calling for. Right? We have the government stating that they they would they have promised us how many ships to bring our agricultural produce up to the to the international market. Yet still nothing is being done. We will ensure that this is done. At least one ship is placed in that longhouse facility so our produce can come out from our farms, process through the, the one mile facility, transport it to the longhouse and, trans and ship out of Dominica to generate income for our farmers and the normal man on the street. Our bread and butter issue, these are the things that we, we want to see develop, right? We hear of millions, billions that have been trashed out of there. If these monies are being spent to develop Portsmouth, we will have a better standard of living. We will see things develop in Portsmouth. As I've said, and I'll continue to say, for Dominica to move forward, Portsmouth must move forward. And the onus is on each and every one of us here. All the businessmen, the simple of persons that are there, even those who clean the street, we have our part to play. We have to stand up as a people, put aside color politics, party politics, put it aside. It is not about Lennox Linton or Roosevelt Skerritt. It is not about labor or work because of freedom. It is about Dominica. And that is why when I stand today and I hear people talk about cool out, they want personal cool out. I've said it and I'll say it again. We do not want any personal cool out here. We, the people that stand today, we stand for a national cool out where the economy can thrive and everyone can benefit. Everyone can reap their fair share. Just a while ago, a young man told me that if he wants a loan, if he wants some money, he has to go to the bank and get a loan. But the economy is not one that is encouraging. It is not encouraging. So that is why he is standing in solidarity with us. He has traveled to go to Rosa, but he said he is in favor of what happened because we have been silent for too long in Portsmouth. We have been silent. 
when you look at what is happening, the government of Italy is not interested in the development of Cosmo. That is why, after they have played a blind eye to Ross and allowed Ross to leave our shores, up to, up to date, they have not done anything to better the condition for the landlords and the people who were benefiting directly from Ross. They have abandoned it completely and hoping that we will continue to be silent. But the time will come when every landlord in, in, in Picard will stand up and take to the streets and demand their fair share from the resources that have been sold from the country. It is time that we stand up because this administration, they were instrumental in bringing in all these Haitians to the Picard area. I've gone on the ground and spoken to the Haitians and they said that there, there, there has been advertisement in Haiti encouraging them to come to Dominica, telling them that Dominica is the little Miami of the Caribbean. Yet when they come here and they see the condition, some of them they are at the river to beg in. They are driven to beg in because one, I, I had the experience in front of in front of me. One Haitian went to ask a young lady for something because he had no money to cook, and she she told him she didn't have anything, but she, she had a little pity. He asked her even if it's twenty dollars, she she can give him, and she said no, I don't have twenty. I'll give you fifteen, because she thought that he was on a scam. But as he got that fifteen dollars, he walked just down the street, went into a little snack and he bought a biscuit and a juice. And that is the reality the Haitians are living. Some of them said that Dominica is worse off than their own country and they had to go back to Haiti. Some of them, before, they, before their ticket had expired, they went back to Haiti. And it is all because of this administration who their, their sole idea is to remain in office. So they know that once they took off Ross from, from, from the people of Cosmo, they disarmed them so they are no longer independent. They will revert to begging them. But they realized that the people were stirring up something, so they brought in the Haitians to pacify the situation. To, pr to date, nothing has been done to improve the way of life of the landlords or any of the persons that, have, that were working directly at Ross, at Ross. So this is why we are standing up here. And we, the United Workers' Party, along with yours truly, we are committed to bringing in development to that Picard area. We will ensure that a university is brought back here, that the landlords can reap the benefit that they ought to reap. We will ensure that the economy in Portsmouth and the country by extension will thrive so that every one of us can get our fair share, that we can enjoy our life here in Dominica. We cannot continue to remain in silence. We have to stand up as a people, stand up as a people and demand answers for our $1.2 billion and all that is stashed out out there that is not accounted for. We have to demand answers. We as a people need to stand up and demand accountability in high office. The government is there to do the work of the people. They are not our boss. They are not our slave masters. They are there to do the work and we have to hold them accountable. We have to demand transparency. We have to demand accountability. We have to stand up against corruption, stand up against victimization as a people and put our foot down right here. We need to see Dominica move forward, move back to the days when we were the breadbasket of the Caribbean. Today, we are no longer the breadbasket. We are the laughing stock of the Caribbean. We've heard it from ministers and government saying that Dominica has been behind for too long. Dominica has been behind for too long. Hence, Dominica has become the laughing stock of the Caribbean. We are to change that and bring back Dominica to glory days where each and every one of us can benefit, benefit from our country. We can feel free to live here in peace, harmony, work and enjoy life as a people. You know, when I left home this morning, my uh, young daughter, the last one, starting her first day in fourth form, she said to me, Daddy, you're going back in that, uh, in that protest again? Take care, they victimize us like the first time. So I said to her, well, how are they going to victimize us? She said, take care, they cut off my scholarship at school. So I said to her, I don't think they will do that. Although you can't put nothing past them, but I don't think they will do it. But you know, it just shows that we cannot disregard the young people. They are young and they're listening. And it's true, they may not interrupt our conversation, but they're taking in what we're saying. And this is something that we as Dominicans, we have to be more mindful of. The level of victimization in this country, my friend, is real. It's real. And it's, it's very, very frustrating because sometimes I look at Dominica and I look at where we're going as a country. 
how can a country develop by the sale of its, its passport? The only export I know the country has of any or worthy of mention is its passport. St. Vincent doesn't sell passports. They, they said they're not selling their birthright, but they just built an international airport just a couple of years ago, and their economy is much better than ours. But you have an administration there that tell you, if not passport, then what? They cannot think of anything else to do. But I am looking at the controversy surrounding the CBI program, and I believe it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time that, that even the Dominica diplomatic passport, I am even surprised that the diplomatic passport of Dominica is still given recognition. But if we continue that way, I believe they'll just totally disregard the Dominica diplomatic passport. And our own national passport might be reduced to like the passport of Haiti. Haitians cannot really go very far on their passports. But if we don't pull up things, pull up our socks and get things going right in this country, this is where I can see this place is heading. And it's really troubling. I can remember a few years ago, even when the Freedom Party was in government. You find a number of Dominicans who lived in the diaspora for many years. They would come back and they would build some nice big homes and they would retire here. Because up to that point, we had a good healthcare system in Dominica. Many islands from the region used to come to Dominica to study our healthcare here. Now, I don't want to say it's the worst because I haven't been everywhere, but our health, our health here leaves a lot to be desired. If you were to go to the hospital tonight, let us say something happened to you, you get a cramp and you go up the hospital, let us say at 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock, chances are you're not going to find a doctor there. They will tell you doctor is on call. But doctor in call is nonsense. You cannot tell me any time you walk into a hospital, if you say you're a hospital, you have to meet a doctor present. And this idea of doctor on call is foolishness. Doctor on call is only there if things get a little bit too busy for the doctor who is, is at the hospital, then he calls a backup. But you can't tell me there's no doctor in the hospital and you tell me about doctor on call. So this is one of the reasons why you find it, Dominica is not no longer attractive to retirees for wanting to come and build their homes. In fact, there are many Dominicans who, who right now, I have friends of mine who are even afraid to come to Dominican vacation because they feel if they come here and something happens to them, they may not be able to get proper medical care. Now, this is a national crisis. This is a national crisis and nobody's paying attention to that. Everybody's too busy stuffing their pocket with millions of dollars from the CBI program. Right now, our diplomats are fighting over themselves over big money. So while the little man here talking about a little $200 cool-out, fellas talking about 30 million US dollar cool-out. 30 million US is 80 million EC. This is the kind of money that's being tossed around out there. One guy is fighting, he say, well, he want to share, he want to share, and he share 7 million US, which is almost 20 million EC. So this is the kind of money that's being banded around with our passport. And the government don't even want us to ask up any questions about it. They don't want us to question it. All we're asking is questions, accountability, show us how you're spending the money. That is all, you know. We don't accuse them of anything. All we want is accountability. And they're saying that they're starting to get vexed. They're getting vexed. They don't even want us to ask questions. But you know, the last time I looked at Dominica, I looked at Dominica as a democratic country. I, we have moved a long, long way away from the principles of a, of a democratic country. But I, I've always said I would never live in a country that is not democratic. And the way I see we going, it looks as though they want me out of here. Because we are going down the path of total, total dictatorship. We have been talking about that in the opposition for the last 15 years. We've been warning. You remember when we used to say that the dictatorship, it was creeping? Then we say it's creeping. We say it's crawling. We say it's walking. Now it's galloping. Just now, the next movie is it's flying. So I just want to say in conclusion, this is why I stand. I stand for Dominica. I haven't got no degrees behind my name. I never went to no universities. The only thing that I want behind my name is Pat Corbett Esquire, citizen of Dominica. That's my only title, citizen of Dominica. I have no de degree, whether doctorate or otherwise, no degree. My only degree is Dominica. This is why I am here to represent Dominica, not about Pat Corbett, not even about Pat Corbett, children, my children, I've made way for them.
I am here for Dominica and I am standing and talking for the hundreds and hundreds, thousands of Dominicans who are too frightened to talk. Because the last time we spoke here two weeks ago, two Thursdays ago when we spoke here, the very next day, my, my wife's parents, my in-laws, we had a, a worker there, a caregiver that was there by the NEP. And the very next day, the Friday, we were here two Thursdays ago, the Friday, that worker was withdrawn. Why was the worker withdrawn? Because I took part in this talk. So in other words, you're not supposed to talk. Everybody's supposed to remain silent. And if you cannot say something nice about them, that maybe you don't even deserve to leave. That is the next, that's the next stage we're going. That's the next stage. So in conclusion, I just want to say we are here, we are standing. And we are standing for Dominica, and we will continue to stand for Dominica. I could move out and I could buy a one-way ticket back to Toronto and leave here tomorrow and go. But I'm not going to do that. I am staying here because I am fighting for Dominica. Go by the hospital. Tell anybody that doubting bullshit going on in the country. Go by the hospital. Any one of them. Health center, any name they want to call it. Let's go to one of them. You'll see the bullshit that's going on. When the money is gone, today all of us will have more information. Today we will not even have to come up here and stand up to educate the masses.